ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be making a blade out of some unbelievable mosaic steel. You'll see how we did that in last episode. So we're going to jump right in with a little bit of forge welding. But before we start, let's thank today's sponsor. And today's sponsor is Simply Safe. Simply Safe is an easy to use, reliable, award winning home security system that only costs 50 cents a day. And they've got every sort of sensor you could possibly want. They've got cameras, door sensors, window sensors, room sensors, water sensors, temperature sensors, everything that you could possibly want to sense, you can get a sensor for it. And it takes less than an hour to set everything up. And the reason that I'm interested in home security and security in general is that back when I was a kid, our house was actually broken into while we were there. Thankfully, we were sleeping upstairs and they just took everything of value from downstairs and we were okay, but Looking back on it now, I realize just how horrifying that really is, and that could have been prevented had we had an alarm system, some sort of security system. So having a sensor that when someone opens up your downstairs window, it alerts the police rather than having a useless dog that didn't even bark while we were there, you have something that actually works. All of the cameras and alarms and sensors are wirelessly monitored by that base station. So go ahead and check it all out at simplysafe.com forward slash forge. That link is gonna be in the bio. Thank you Simply Safe for sponsoring this episode and for keeping us safe. All right, now back to the blade. So what we have here is the billet that we started last episode. There are two plates of 15 and 20 steel on either side and a whole lot of messy, wavy, feathery stuff inside there and it's TIG welded all the way around so that no oxygen can possibly get in there. We've got a hot forge. We're gonna throw it in here, let it come up to temperature and then smash that puppy together. Okay, we got the 15 and 20 plates off of the outside, as well as the welds that were on the sides. It's time to forge this thing into our integral bolster blade, which means I'm going to upset the back side of it, draw out the tank, and then forge my blade from there.
I've done a test etch for me to look at. You guys can't look at it yet, but it's looking amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up some of this stainless foil and make a pouch for this knife so I can run it through some thermal cycles without it oxidizing too bad in there. Now that we have some stainless foil for a project that Alec is working on, make it a little bit easier for us to do one for ourselves. All right, now that we have our little hot pocket, we're gonna throw it into our Paragon KMT9, KM9T Double Barrel Pro. We'll run it through some nice softening thermal cycles. Okay, here we are after all of our thermal cycles. We went up to 1800, then cooled to black, then 1700, then cooled to black, then to 1650, then cooled to black, then 1550, 1450, and 1400. That's what we call a subcritical anneal. And there we go. It looks really clean. You can see the pattern in there, kind of cool. the blade in a thin layer of satanite which will prevent it from oxidizing but unlike a steel pouch it'll allow the oil when we quench it to get all the way around the blade and it'll still harden really well. All right, this thing is crispy, golden brown, looking nice. I'm gonna go ahead and straighten it out now. And using the method that my friend Kurt Holland taught me when he came out here to visit, and that is to put it on something flat like this, and then to use a clamp, put a little bit of downward force on it, and then use a torch. I'm gonna be cooling off the edge constantly and using this torch to get that warp out of it. It's just a warp in one spot, about right there. And after that, it'll be really easy to grind out any other little squiggly dudes that are stuck in there. Well, it's straight enough to be able to grind out the rest of that while we're grinding. We'll be able to grind out the rest of it while we're grinding, believe it or not. I don't know when else you would grind out the rest of it, but we're gonna do it while we're grinding. Speaking of grinding, let's hop on into the grinding room and do some grinding. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and square up the back of that bolster now in that angled shape using this Bill Benke file guide that we just so happen to sell, alexsteelshop.com. So the blade is looking so good. It's now time to scribe in the lines for our S grind. The edge is at about six thousandths of an inch, and the spine tapers from about a hundred thou all the way down to about fifty thou near the tip. So I'm gonna cover this thing up in some blue dicum, and then I'll scribe my lines to carve out the hollow grind or the S grind.
So we're getting to work sanding on this thing. I'm just gonna hand sand it up to a rough 400 grit. We'll do the final finish at 600 before the etch, but for now we're gonna get things tuned in, make them look nice at 400 before we move on to doing work on the tang. Using some 220 grit Rhino wet here, which we just so happen to have a fantastic price on, alexsteelshop.com. So what I'm doing now is I'm going at kind of a 45 degree angle or so uh, at this edge kind of aggressively and I'm doing the last little bit of thinning out of the edge that I want to do before the knife will be done. When I came off the grinder the edge was at about three thousandths of an inch which isn't very much but we want that to be even thinner so I'm going to hand sand it until it's pretty much sharp maybe about a thousandth of an inch or so. This thing's looking really, really good. I've got it hand sanded at a very, very rough 400 grit. I've got that edge way thinned out. So it hasn't been sharpened yet. This is just as hand sanded, and it already slices paper. That's where we want it. Another cool thing that I like to make sure that my chef's knives do is I like to test what we call edge deflection. And so that means that essentially, this test is to see if the edge is not only thin enough, but also if the heat treat is good enough that the edge doesn't get ruined when you run it across a bronze or brass rod. So if you look at the edge where it's contacting, it's actually moved up and then it returns back down to where it wants to go. And this just means that it has an extremely thin edge and a good heat treat. That edge deflection test is looking really nice on this. Got that S grind hand sanded out as well. And the reason that we do an S grind is this. So the reason that we did our S grind is twofold. The first reason is because when you're cutting with a knife, and you're cutting through vegetables and stuff like that, they have a tendency to stick onto the side of a blade. So you're cutting through carrots or cucumbers or something like that. The surface tension from the food sticks onto the side of the blade and it's really, really annoying. And so when we add our S grind in there, this is the cross section of our blade here, that's our S grind. It means that rather than having a flat or slightly convex surface for that food to hang on to, that hollow grind in there breaks the surface tension and it aids in what we call food release, which is kind of self-explanatory because it's the food releasing itself from the blade. So the carrots or the cucumbers or whatever is not able to hang onto the side of the blade and it falls off. The other reason that an S grind is really nice on a chef's knife is because it means when you're cutting through something tall, you don't have the friction of the whole blade. You only have the friction of that first three eighths of an inch or so. And so it cuts even more like a laser than it regularly would if you just had a flat grind or a slight convex grind. So we've got our blade dialed in now. We're gonna go ahead and fix this tang. And then after that, we're going to TIG weld on a little bit of all thread because that's what we're gonna use to hold the whole blade together. But right now, this tang is at the wrong angle. We need to forge it down in the right spot. Well, thank you guys for following along with today's episode. If you enjoyed, please go ahead and like and subscribe. And again, let's thank today's sponsor, which was Simply Safe. Make sure to tune in next time, wherein we're going to finish this here chef's knife. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.